Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, the place where we not only talk about what's going on in the gun world, but also how we're going to fix it together. And the content that I've got for you tonight is some of the most egregious propaganda that we saw in the last two or three days around gun control in an election season. I'm about to show you two things and mix match these bad boys up. Your mind is about to be blown and that's impressive because we see a lot here on the gun side. Everything will be linked in the description box below. And of course, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on. All right, my brothers and sisters, we've got two things that we've got to break down. So one of the mainstays, particularly during an election season, and honestly, for a lot of the time we've been together since the Biden administration, um, the media likes to really propagate gun control. They like to twist things out of perspective, and they like to use headlines as the main story and then provide no backup or no data or no sources or even reinforcement in the article. So what I'm about to show you is two things, one out of Indiana and one off of CNN. All right. The first thing I'm going to show you is this is just so silly and so stupid, but everyone picked it up. I'm sure you guys saw it. Video shows Indiana lawmakers showing holstered gun to students who were advocating for gun control. So you would think from that he's like being way beyond the pale and so many stories were all over the place and he's scaring people and brandishing guns and Twitter was on fire digitally. Yeah, um, what I'm about to show you is the actual clip while he's talking to gun control advocates and then I'm going to say what not to do in the future. But I'm going to play it right now. I'm just kind of narrate what's going on. But listen to this. You've got a guy talking to every, like, basically it was like kids demand action or students demand action. It was a gun control group. And all he's doing is standing there talking about it. Very cordial, very calm, very easy, nothing aggressive. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he brandishes his weapon. That was it. That was always terrifying. That's what the media put out and propagated. Gun control advocates propagated as brandishing a weapon, threatening people, scaring students. He literally opened his vest to say there's nothing to be afraid of to protect ourselves. What's wrong with this? Is our Second Amendment right? Quite literally, opens his jacket and goes, we're fine, and then closes it right back. His hands don't even go near it. He did not brandish a weapon. He did not do anything threatening. But because we live in a world of, I'll be honest with you, political activists at every single level always looking for something to do, that didn't work out too well because, of course, you gave them exactly what they're looking for, a soundbite and a snippet to where they can make articles and say how crazy all gun uh, rights activists are. Now, that's what happened. That's the propaganda. Here's what I'll say on this, and you guys let me know what you think in the comments field. If, you, if you're on the gun rights side of the aisle and you're talking to Students Demand Action, which is a division of Moms Demand Action, which is run by Shannon Watts, who is on the board of Every Town for Gun Safety, do you think it's a good idea to even allude to the fact that you have a gun on you're not wrong in your rights but if you don't know that they're going to take that video and propagate it everywhere for their gun control desires you're just feeding them ammunition so to speak now again nothing wrong but that was just episode number one that was the warm-up that was the big entree at ad, ad, um, the um, appetizer if you will now here comes the entree this one is mind-boggling to me because it turns out we had some pretty rough situations going on and CNN's right there to cover it. Man suspected of beheading his father bought a gun the day before, fatally shooting him and abusing his corpse, DA said. Well, that's a terribly egregious headline. So from that, you would think, oh my goodness, it's all the gun's fault. Everything. It's insane. Yeah, let's dive in. Because in this article, which is linked, you can, pr you can prove that I'm not lying to you. Um... He doesn't mention how he bought the gun ever once, when he bought it, how he bought it, what location he bought it. Nothing, never. In fact, check this out. CNN. The man accused of showing his father's severed head during a politically charged online rant this week first shot the federal worker to death using a handgun he'd bought only a day earlier, a Pennsylvania prosecutor said Friday. That's it. That's the whole thing. Headline, he bought a gun the day before. Shouldn't the headline maybe read, I don't know, psycho commits abusive murder, uh, then does all of these things. I can't even say a lot of the things on YouTube. I mean, what, these people will see anything and everything to do with a gun, and all of a sudden it's the gun's fault. It doesn't matter what he used. I'm pretty sure that if he was going to go to these steps, the gun purchase is the last bit of your problems. Oh, by the way, it was also from an FFL. Check this out. Suspect decried federal workers, the DA says. During the online diatribe, 
this person rails against the Biden administration and the border crisis while declaring himself the new acting U.S. president. He also says his father um, is in hell for being a traitor to the country. Okay, so he's the new U.S. president, if you're tracking. Um, and then he went to a National Guard base or armory and did this. Upon his arrest at the National Guard site, this guy asked to speak with Pennsylvania's governor to join forces. So the acting U.S. president, in his mind, went to a National Guard site, broke in, and then asked to speak to the governor of Pennsylvania to join forces. You really think the story here is he bought a gun the day before? Particularly when he absolutely decapitated his own father? You think, you think the story might be focused on a few different elements here other than, <clears throat> oh, we bought a gun the day before. I think there's a few more things we could have hit on before that. Anyway, check this out. This is a shocker. This guy had minor encounters with police, and listen to the details here. The district attorney said this person had, quote, no history of diagnosed mental health issues, and so far, no known instances of voluntary or involuntary commitment to a psychiatric unit or hospital. And they were involved in three different occasions over the past 15 years. Um, so, guys, with, with what I just read you, make, make sure you guys hear me really, really solidly. Um, are they crazy? The headline is actually all about the fact that he bought a gun, day, a gun the day before, not the fact that he murdered his father and then decapitated him. They got on the Internet, declared himself the new sitting U.S. president, showed what he had just done in a plastic baggie. Then he went to an armory um, site declared again that he was the president and asked for the governor of Pennsylvania to join forces against something. You really think that article maybe was mistitled unless you just wanted to prove a point with a headline. Both of these things, and this is why I'm doing this kind of mix mash, both of these things were blatant abuses of the truth. They were blatant abuses of headline usage and a mal, uh, malintent on the journalism part. But the point is, it's gun control through headlines. And that's the entire point of why I wanted to show you this. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I will see you on the next one. I'm Braden. See you later.